Google's Pixel Buds Pro. What kind of pro is this? Goedendag, we are DHRME, deliberately hearing really many earbuds. Now, you're going to experience some of the things the Pixel Buds Pro can do in this video. But let's start with the price. At $199 or €220, Euros, you're going to have to do something outstanding to stand out. At least in today's market. Samsung, Apple, Sony, Sennheiser, Jabra, Soundcore, Edifier, One More, Bose. All these companies have products at this price and some even cheaper that do everything the Pixel Buds Pro claim to do. So why would you get it? Well, with Google, it's all about getting you and keeping you into that Google ecosystem. We'll come to the sound, ANC and all that good stuff in a bit, but this is clearly a showcase for the Google Assistant to live on one more place, your earbuds. Now, this isn't new, so many headphones and earbuds already can have Google Assistant enabled on the earbuds. But hey Google, at least be a little subtle about it. We like your assistant, but seriously, the default setting is to have long press on both earbuds activate assistant. I switch the left one to ANC or transparency and right one to Google Assistant, as Google knows it should be. Using the assistant itself is very responsive. You can do all the googly things like asking about the weather, etc. You can go one step further and reply to messages using just your voice. And you can even do systemy things like switching to noise cancelling and check battery levels on the headphones and on our phone by asking Google Assistant. The weird thing is we didn't notice any special integration with a Pixel phone except that you see all the options directly in the Bluetooth menu. On a Samsung phone, for example, it was one tap away. And you know what, the Assistant isn't exclusive to the Pixel Buds Pro. Pixel is probably Google's vision on how they would like to see Assistant integration into earbuds. So, you know, Big Brother's got another platform to harvest your data. Search, Android, and now earbuds? But we digress. From smarts to sound, let's talk about it. Look, if you're one of our fellow audio nerds following this channel, these sound fine. To start with, they're AAC only, and that shows. For certain recordings, these sound really good, especially for warmer recordings with too much high-end sparkle. The frequency response curve we generated reflects that. There's loads of bass and plenty of sub-bass rumble, and bass heads are probably going to like the custom-designed 11mm dynamic speaker drivers. But weirdly, in terms of volume, they got way louder on my Samsung phone than they did on my Pixel phone. Go figure, but then come the downsides. There is no high-res codec to be found anywhere. And the soundstage seems very limited. The timbre is uh, pretty good for the most part, uh, ironically, but at this price, we're going to have to say that that treble is a real weakness. With so much bass presence, the higher frequencies are definitely a bit muted. It sometimes feels that Google's trying to mask how badly they perform by turning up the bass and turning down the treble in the mix. When the treble does surface, it makes these buds sound a bit worse for this price. In terms of features, there is one to boost bass and treble at lower volumes. So if you listen to music at that lower volume, this might be helpful. But this whole story combined with the lack of EQ ability make these firmly a uh, B plus-ish for sound in our view. But if the Pro isn't for sound, what is it? Let's talk about noise cancelling and transparency performance. The noise cancelling is legit top tier stuff. In 2022, we have a lot more excellent noise cancelling options than we did before. But we were very impressed with the low end noise reduction on the Pixel Buds Pro. We could see these being a very comfortable set of buds for a commute since engine and air conditioning noises are all but absent. When it comes to voices, they are a bit more present, however. They are definitely turned down, don't get us wrong, but it doesn't do as good a job on those sounds as it does on the engine sounds. For reference, the ANC is comparable to the best in the business for low-end ANC. And yes, we include the Sonys and the Bose in that list. If you've got ANC on and you're in the wind, then they're similar to most top-tier buds. Mostly blocked out, although we hear it a little bit from certain angles. The transparency on these is also very good. Voices sound clear, but not really up to the AirPods Pro or Galaxy Buds Pro level. 
Also, there's a very low white noise in transparency, which is impressive. What this means is that if you're using this in a quiet space like an office or a home, you can have these on transparency pretty much all day long since there's almost no additional noise you're hearing. The only thing we can fault these on ANC and transparency is that they have absolutely no customization. It's either on or off and that's it. No sliders, levels or any kind of adjustment to either the transparency or the ANC. Reminds us very much of the AirPods Pro and you know what, that's alright by us. Let's talk a little bit about the occlusion effect. You know, the feeling of hearing your own voice through your skull. The Pixel Buds Pro does a decent job at trying to reduce this, but by no means have fully gotten rid of it. The Pixel Buds Pro comes with three microphones in each earbud, a voice accelerometer, wind block mesh covers, and a ticket to Mr. Beast's Willy Wonka chocolate factory. Okay, not that last one, but we're not easily impressed by specs and marketing speak. Take a listen for yourselves and we'll tell you our conclusion after the test. Headphones are recommended. All right, we're going to head out for a bit, but this is the microphone test in quiet conditions on the Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro. Pop up, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And one more time, softer. Pop up, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And now the Sony Link Buds S. Pop up, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop up, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. The Google Pixel Buds Pro. Pop pop popsicle ice ice icicle test test testing one two three. Pop pop popsicle ice ice icicle test test testing one two three. Pop pop popsicle ice ice icicle test test testing one two three. Pop pop popsicle ice ice icicle test test testing one two three. So this is the Sony Link Buds S with some cars passing by that will give us some noise. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro in windy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Sony Link Buds S, windy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. That got a bit more wind than the other two. Right, it's quite a breeze we've got going here. This is the Pixel Buds Pro in windy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. So here's our conclusion, guys. First off, we're very happy we chose these three earbuds because each of them has a very different philosophy when it comes to cancelling out noise. In terms of quiet conditions, we would be happy with any of these buds. The Sony Link Buds S tries to cancel out all the sounds, the Samsung Buds Pro kind of lets you hear all the sounds, and the Pixel Buds Pro is somewhere in between. And in terms of the Fuckmon controls, they're not bad, except for being able to mute, you get the basics to answer or hang up, and volume controls. The comfort and fit have been on point so far. The buds don't fall out and seem pretty comfortable if you're okay with that deep penetrative style silicone tips that have pretty much become standard across the board. However, maybe it's the design or the penetration level. After using these for an hour or so, there was definitely some feelings of violation of our ear holes. We don't think they were the most comfortable, but of course your conscious may disagree with our conscious and it's a free world for conscious at least. Anyway, where were we? You get only three tips in the box and the tips in the design led to a very secure fit and we can see ourselves using these for workouts. And you know what? This is a small touch, but thank you Google for giving us that little cylinder to hold and store the tips. Most other companies give you flimsy plastic bags or one-time paper storage, so this is really nice. No fiddling about and the tips can go right back where they came from. More companies adopt this, please. And speaking of workouts, the numbers here are unfortunately the bare minimum. IPX4 water resistance for the earbuds that should work well against a light sweat or a bit of a drizzle, but nothing heavier. 
The case is IPX2 rated, which means it's protected at water spraying at 15 degrees vertically. So maybe a very specific kind of rain. Either way, we'll take what we can get when it comes to the case, though the buds are strictly the bare minimum. But we love everything else about the build and design. The touch controls are responsive and work very well. Swipe forward and back for volume is different from anything else we've tried. And it works pretty well. However, the only gesture you can customize is the touch and hold gesture. As we said, we use one bud for the Google Assistant and the other to switch noise cancelling modes. The buds do look smaller in person than we expected. Most of the text seems to be stuffed into the part between the touch surface and the ear tips. So what you see in your ears isn't invisible, but also isn't ginormous. <coughs> Both quiet comfort. Google has four colors for the buds only. Charcoal, grass, lemongrass, and coral. Coral? We have the lemongrass here. Because of that design, the adjustment surface area is different from the control surface area. What do we mean? Say the buds get loose after a while, you can easily adjust the buds. No accidental touches while doing so. This is something Samsung got wrong, because if you don't get an optimum fit on the Galaxy Buds Pro, adjusting the fit always leads to some accidental touches, which gets annoying because first they don't fit and then they pause your audio. And on the subject of the case, its size and shape is something we can appreciate. Skinny jeans might be out of fashion, but if they ever do come back, you can still rock this case in the front pocket and not be fired from work for being too suggestive. The battery life is a respectable seven hours with ANC turned on and 11 hours without. Total battery life with the case is 31 hours. Wireless charging is also on board. The Pixel Buds Pro is limited it lets you do the basics and not much else as we've pointed out and should we even bother saying it no it's not available on the ios apple app store for those of you with your fruit emblazoned devices and speaking of the fruit company google also has a deeper integration for the pixel buds pro on pixel devices so as soon as you hit that gear icon on the bluetooth menu next to the pixel buds pro all options become immediately visible. On a Samsung phone, only a few of the options are visible at first glance. For things like touch control, sound settings, ear tips, seal check, and more advanced features, you will have to open the Pixel Buds app. Interestingly, on the Google Pixel 6a we have, we could not uninstall the Pixel Buds app, but only disable it. Again, a very clear ecosystem play from Google. Here's a thought. The pure Android experience you've been talking about has just been a pure Google experience on that. I must say that the Android app switchy thing which is connected to your Google account works quite well. What this does is if you associate these earbuds with your Google account on an Android phone, the next time you use another Android phone, the same Google account, these buds will pop up. No pairing required. If anything, it works annoyingly well because that pop up, it happens all the time. And even when you don't want it, you have this pop up about a device being available and kind of gets on your nerves when you don't want to see it. But you know what? This is not a Pixel exclusive. Sony earphones among others can do this as well. So it's something that Google provides with Android. And then there's multi-point. This is just plain old regular run-of-the-mill multi-point and can be used across any source device. So you can connect it to devices at one time, any devices that use Bluetooth, that is Android, iOS, Windows, Mac OS, washing machines. But in our experience being connected to a Mac and Android, it wasn't quite as reliable. So pretty much par for the course when it comes to multi-point these days. Also, if you don't like multi-point or want to connect to more than two devices, you can still pull connection from a third device, which means once you've paired these buds, you can just pull the device from the Bluetooth menu. You don't have to go and disconnect from the first two. This is brutally underrated and you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole of pairing these buds again, which is quite awesome. Honestly. Last but not least, the case has a physical button that can help out with putting these buds into pairing mode if things start malfunctioning. So the multi-point pairing bit is completely aced by Google here. When it comes to extra features, the Pro Buds do them all. In-ear sensor, check. Single bud use, check. Wireless charging, we said it before, check. The one annoying thing is the loud tone it plays to indicate that it's connected every time you put these things in your ear. Hey Google, can you fix that? Sorry. So, should you buy the Pixel Buds Pro? Well, that depends. What kind of pro are you? If audio is not going to be the main reason why you buy buds, then these are a pretty good bet. Don't get us wrong, this is a fantastic product for most people. But if you're an audio nerd, this isn't gonna be what you want. 
Except for audio, it's very pro on all other fronts. If you're the kind of pro who needs the fantastic ANC and transparency, great design, incredible battery life, above average calls, then these are very much pro level buds. But if sound is solely what you want, you can get much better sound for much less. You've been watching another prolific review and we've been DHRME. Namaste.